Tin Cup Kelly here, and in this series of flickers, we're going to explore many of the places to see and things to do in the magnificent Yukon Territory and along other parts of the Klondike Corridor. In this flicker, we'll discover just a few of the many historic places that still abound in my old stomping grounds of Dawson City. In part one of our tour with Parks Canada interpreter Gabby, we'll get a close look at Dawson's first post office and the historic bank. Tin Cup Kelly here, Gabby. Nice and, to meet you, uh, Tin Nice Cup. to meet you. Uh, I like the way you're, uh, you're dressed. Thank you. This is 1898 Gold Rush dress. I recognize it easily. Do you? Yeah, I do, I do. I, uh, Gabby, you know, hold on to your socks because I'm a time traveler. So, uh, a I, time traveler? I'm a time traveler. I, it was a whole long story how it happened, wow. but I found myself here in uh, your time oh. um, somehow. But I made the best of it, and I, I like it here. Um, I'm not, Good. I'm not always real keen on these here vehic vehiculars. I was holding on when I rode not on bad. one of those one time. Wow. But we're here at the Dawson City... Visitor Center, that's yes. what this is here? That's right. And, and what, what happens in here? Well, in here we have both the Yukon government counter and the Parks Canada counter. So all the information you would need to enjoy your stay here, where to stay, where to eat, what tours to do, uh, displays. This is the, the place to start. Ah, and this is the place where folks like you will, uh, will meet people people from all over the world. You get people from all over the all world. All over the world. Not uh, quite time travelers, though. You're my first. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's good to, you know, uh, meet people of, of different walks and talks, isn't it? Yes, uh, absolutely. And, and, uh, and you tell us about things beyond the gold rush. My era, do you not? Absolutely. Uh, we certainly talk about the gold rush, but we also talk about the First Nation, the Trondikwichin, and the impact the gold rush had on them. It's a balanced side of history. We talk about women in history. We talk about everything so that we really balance it out. And we're across uh, the way there, and uh, they're, they're, they're shut down now, but yeah. uh, we've got the uh, um, uh, Trondike Witchin Cultural Center, Correct. do we not? Yes, and, we do. And, and uh, I would like to, like to go in there uh, because that would remind me of some of my friends because I had many First Nation friends, oh, some actually. who helped me survive uh, these harsh winters up here taught me how to mm. fish and hunt mm -hmm. they knew how to live from the land that's, and right. that's why the change was so great to them when newcomers showed up with all their stuff yeah i i, I and then saw that in other places as well i'm um, certain yeah. so let's can we go have a look in some of our um uh, um places that were here when i was here absolutely oh. so tin cup did you uh, strike it rich when you were here well, I, I made a, a mo moderate um, uh, amount of money. Uh, did um, did find some gold both times. Uh, first time up was at 40 Mile. You been to 40 Mile? I have, but not for gold. Not for gold. No. The former post office in Dawson's first opened in 1900. It was designed by architect Thomas Fuller, and its three-story octagonal corner entrance sure stands out as a fine reminder of earlier days. Well, Gabby, and again, most people today probably just go into a, a postal office and um, they, they get what they need and they leave, and it's just a daily thing but here uh, it was exciting was it not to come into the post office it was exciting considering during the gold rush there was no post office and the bags of mail were just dropped off and you had to go through it yourself hoping you had some mail <laughs> so that was chaotic right. so having the post office was exciting because it brought order and infrastructure and some stability to the town and and Communication. Communication. From the outside world. Absolutely. We're so used to instant communication now. You could wait a year in those days for a letter to let people know you were alive, uh, to find out if you were married or divorced. That's it took right. a year sometimes. Yeah, to find yeah. Out. it, it, it made, th made things even tougher for us in that we were out of communication. We didn't know what was... Uh, Right. Happening with their loved ones, and our loved ones didn't know what was happening with us. That's and right, and even world events, it could pass you by. If the sternwheeler stopped running in the winter, 
Yeah, I, you know, I remember, I think uh, by the time I knew about the you know, Spanish-American War, it had been going on for, uh, for a fair amount of time, and somebody said something about uh, us being in, you know, involved in a war, you know, me, me being from the States, and I said, well, what war are we involved in? And it uh, ends up that it was the, the big right. Spanish-American War. Right. So. so really very important to have this communication, and this post office fulfilled that duty up until about 1928 and then it shut down. 1928? Around that time, yeah. So this here building was built... Uh, 1900. 1900. Right. So, uh, so, so you, it, would have, you would have seen Of it. course. Uh, seen well, it. I came in here yeah. and you know I got my mail but uh, that's the that's the key isn't it about it's good to realize that Dawson kept going. After the gold rush, the gold rush was what kind of gave birth to Dawson City? Would you say, as far as uh, you know, the 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 peop, the non uh, you know the local newcomers. for the newcomers? Yeah, certainly coming. the First Nations were here for thousands of sure, years, but they had absolutely. a fish camp farther up river. Right. Yeah, so so Gabby, this and uh, again, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this too many times, but look at this. This is all so taken care of and solid, and what a what an amazing place and, and amazing that it's still here. But tell us, tell us about my good friend Percy, because Percy, <laughs> he, uh, I, I, when he got the job in, uh, in, in 10, 1910. I, I was, uh, I knew he was the right man for the job. So oh, yeah. tell us a bit more about Percy, if you well, will. Well, I tell you, you know, it wasn't easy to be delivering that mail down to Eagle, especially in spring and fall when the river was breaking and freezing. There are stories of Percy crashing through the ice. One time he tried to save his horse team, couldn't do it, but he saved the mail. He was soaking wet, had to walk two miles to a cabin, dry himself and the mail out, got it to Eagle. In the years from 1910 to 49, he never once lost a piece of mail. He got the nickname of Iron Man of the North, and we love to celebrate that sort of. Because we like to remember that and honor that, we run a dog sled race in his honor, the Percy DeWolf Memorial Mail Run. Uh, from here, the post office down to Eagle and back, the same way he used to go. People take the mail down with them. It's a fundraiser for the race, and so you can still mail a letter by dog team. Let's mosey over to the Bank of British North America now. It opened in May of 1898 to accommodate stampeders like myself and was a better place to cash in your dust for dollars. Many prospectors and business folk relied on its services. Old friend Alex McDonald, the king of the Klondike, ran his numerous mining and land ventures out of here. The bank closed in 1968 after the last gold dredge shut down. Well, Gabby, we're in an important place, are we not? Yes, the Bank of British North America. Uh, the bank was buying the gold from the miners and giving them paper money so that they didn't have to pay with gold dust anymore. They could pay <laughs> with money. Well, yeah. that, and that was, that was very important to um, be able to, to take that, that mineral that they were finding, that I, I found as well, and exchange it for the, mm -hmm. the currency of the day. Now, exactly, yeah. Because, you know, people think you find gold and it'll, it'll get you anything. For example, my, my clinging friend, we, he, we spent an entire winter together. He helped me survive and he taught me how to hunt and fish. And, uh, and just, um, you know, he taught, me, he taught me things about the land I hadn't even thought about. You know, I, I was, even in the winter, I was able to see parts of, parts of that life out there that I hadn't even thought about. But when I mentioned gold to him, and I talked about gold, I talked, asked him if he had looked for gold, he wasn't interested in gold. Well, that's a really important uh, distinction to make. For the First Nation, the term to Kuchin here, gold had no value. It was a rock in a creek. You could play with it, but it couldn't feed you. It couldn't house you. It couldn't clothe you. So it had no value at all. The newcomer had a very different value. It was the richness of yourself, your country. So there was a clash of values there. It's really interesting how you could look at the same thing but get different ideas from it. 
Yeah. When you're living off the land, like the Klingit or the Chandra Kuchin, what matters are the, the seasons, the animals being in harmony with that, surviving. That's what was important to them. So gold, they left it in the creeks. It didn't matter to them. Now, the other thing people don't uh, realize is how heavy gold is. Yes, it is 19 times heavier than water and four times heavier than gravel. So a gold bar, you might believe all those movies of people with big bags full of gold bars running away. That's <laughs> not so possible. No. It's very, very heavy. It is. Mm -hmm. it is. And uh, that's what struck me when I first... Um, that first nugget, how heavy it was, and, mm -hmm. uh, and of course that's how you, that's how you pan it, because Absolutely. it sinks. So. That's right, that's how you have your water, your angle, your motion with your pan, so that heavier gold settles and the rest of it goes away. Right. Placer mining, placer gold, that's what you do. There you have it. Now, tell us about the little, uh, little scale that's on display here. So before the banks came in, everyone had a little leather pouch called a gold poke and they had gold dust, and that was the currency at the time. So they would weigh it out on the scales in the saloons, in the stores, and pay for it. But you could always cheat a little bit, so it wasn't very exact. Once the banks came in and you sold your gold and had money, that was a little more to what the South was doing, a little more normal to the economy. Uh, but back then, everyone had scales, everyone paid with their gold dust. Now, um, so if I ask you how big your gold poke was, I'm talking about gold. Uh, <laughs> my goodness. Yeah, my there's goodness. riches to be had everywhere, if, you, if that value matters to you. That's right. And, and those that, you know, they, they would scrounge for it. Well, we know, we've, we've talked about it uh, before, how gold can uh, change, a, change a person. Change a, the, just the, the quest for gold mm -hmm. um, can change a person uh, for the worse, uh, not always for the good. And on the other hand, a lot of folks that came up here, uh, like myself, and like I said, I, you know, a, a moderate, uh, you know, amount of gold I found. But um, just this experience changed my life. Um, it wasn't it wasn't just the wealth that changed my life. And there were, you know, and there were some fellas that came up here, and they weren't they weren't interested in mining the miners, and they weren't interested in the gold necessarily they were interested in just an adventure wow. oh and there was much adventure to be had absolutely this was the last frontier was it not it was considered the last frontier from the newcomer's point of view absolutely oh, that's, right. that's for sure and sometimes when you go out there in the middle of nowhere you realize just how last it is there's a now, lot of wilderness out there now gabby would you call this uh, still the last frontier, one of the last frontiers in a, in a place where people should, uh, should get up here. Is, if if, they're, if they've, they want to go somewhere and they want to experience a, a, a frontier, a magical place, is, uh, is Dawson City in the Yukon a good... Oh, I'd say absolutely, which is why my one year is now 24 years. No, there you <laughs> On our next tour with Gabby, we'll explore the Palace Grand Theater in the Red Feather Saloon. See you then. Get me a canoe and, uh, and paddle down uh, the paddle down there and yeah. uh, paddling back up river might be a bit. Uh, I think you'd want some help. Uh, might might need. Yeah, a, we have motor boats now. Ah, you got vehicular boats. We got vehicular boats. Vehicular boats, ain't Absolutely. that something? Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. maybe we'll have to do that if there's old, uh, old places maybe where I slept.